in the new Hong Kong. I think it's good to stay and show that there can be a continuity and, and people can teach critically. I think that's fairly important to do. I'm Gordon Matthews. I'm a professor of anthropology at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. You did not say, I'm a Hong Konger. And you didn't say you're Chinese. <laughs> Clearly, Hong Kong identity is at a great transition point because of uh, the national security law and the new requirement that citizens should respect their country and love their country, although you can't make love a requirement. That really does shift the way many young people have felt. One way to look at Hong Kong is it's always been in this balance between being Chinese and being international, and it's been both. From a mainland perspective, Hong Kong over the last 20 years has emphasized the international more than the Chinese, particularly because uh, of the emphasis of many young people on democracy rather than on uh, the, the authoritarianism that China practices. Today, that's no longer possible. Some of my more pessimistic students say, Hong Kong is dead. It's only going to survive in uh, you know, London and Melbourne and, and uh, uh, Canadian cities and so on. Maybe, but then other people would say, and they're probably more likely to be correct, in, in my view anyway, Hong Kong identity will continue in a different form. One of the, the proudest times I had as a teacher was during the 2019 protests, getting mainland students and Hong Kong students together to talk. So that I remember a mainland student saying to some Hong Kong students, you know, some people would say Hong Kong is kind of spoiled. And the Hong Kong students say, well, no, we're fighting for our rights and so on. But to have a discussion this way without people shouting at each other, to be able to remain having a friendly relationship despite this difference, I'm really proud that we were able to do that. I very strongly believe in teaching critical thinking so that, for example, I will be teaching later this semester a class on Hong Kong protests. I'm not going to avoid the topic, of course not. It happened and this is part of history. But I will not advocate for anything. One question I might ask on a final exam would be, give me interpretations of the Hong Kong 2019 protests from four different points of view. They can still have their own point of view but based on knowledge, based on thinking through the issues for themselves rather than blind adherence to any one camp. That's what critical thinking is. And is that still going to be allowed in Hong Kong today? I think so. Now we do see the shutting down of uh, numbers of mass media outlets. I am hoping this won't lead to a massive shutdown of all ability to criticize the government in any way. That would be really tragic if it were to take place. One reason why I teach as I do is just to, to maybe help prevent that in a tiny way. Um, I have a student now doing a wonderful project on um, police during the protests. And she's interviewing many policemen, trying to figure out how the protests seem from their point of view. And I'm really proud of her for being able to probe into this and, and find out things that she'd not thought before. That's what anthropology is and that's what I'm trying to teach. If I lose my job before the three years are up, well, that could happen. That's not the end of the world, but I think I'm doing what I should be doing. I'm doing the right thing now. And I think I'm teaching in a way that all over the world, people would support.